Hey, John Dillon here with another basic animation tutorial from VisualBrackBig.com. From time to time, I'm going to put these short tutorials out there and just some things I'm experimenting with and some things that kind of work for me, uh, and I want to share them with you. And here's one such case. What I'm trying to do for a presentation I'm presenting on is talk about the passive learner versus the active learner. And what we have here is, is I have uh, three clip outs. Now I created these uh, images myself and you don't have to, we have a tutorials and showing you how to do this in Photoshop. The difference is of course, I had a nice little white outline here, but you notice how if I go back I'll go page up and page down here, I'm trying to show that, you know, a lot of times training is boring. So I wanted something very passive, something that just comes up very subtle here. That's not very dramatic. And then I want to compare the passive learner to the active learner. And look what I did here. Now I changed the, of course, the, the clip art, but I changed the animation to a little more bouncier one that pops up. When I do an animation, I do not want it to distract from my main message. I wanted to enhance it. Otherwise, sometimes you're better off not to use an animation. So I try to do animations that come in very quickly that aren't drawn out. So let me show you how I did this. Let's go ahead and escape out of this and take a look at PowerPoint. For my passive slide, I wanted the animation to not be so energetic, if you will. I wanted to really kind of reflect the mood of what I was trying to convey with the slide, which is that passive learning is where the learner sits back and it's not very engaging. So what I did is if I click on this image here, the effect I use is float up. So let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and strip all the, they all actually have the same animations up to timing and slightly different. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all these animations and show you how I did it. So I'm going to select my character and I'm going to go ahead and make sure my animation panel is active here. We're going to go to the drop down here and Basically, I have float in, but that's not quite what I'm looking for. So in 2010, I'm going to scroll down to here, and it's actually off the menu, and I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I'm going down to more entrance effects. So this is entrance. So go down to the very bottom, look for more entrance effects. And here's what we get. And I'm going to look for basically right here in the moderate stage, a float up. So click on that. And now you notice if I play the animation, it comes up nice. It just floats up, but I'm going to just do one more effect on this. I'm going to go ahead and go previous and the duration is fine. I actually want this to be medium and everything else looks good. So we're going to go ahead and set with previous and we're going to go two seconds for the duration and that looks good. Let's test it. So it's nice and slow. Now, I'm going to go ahead and apply the same effect to these two guys without having to go through all this Mickey Mouse stuff here. So I'm going to select him with my animation a pane active. I'm going to choose the animation painter and come down here and apply the effects to that caricature and then select him and do the same thing for the last one. And the last thing I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and take my center picture, which is number three here, and I'm just going to move it over just a little bit. So now they kind of come up in different, different order a little bit. So just a little bit of variation. Now for my active, I wanted energy. So if we select a character here, if you went too far there. So I select a character here uh, and double click on it. We're using the fly in and I also have a bounce to it. So let's go ahead and play this again so you get a chance to see it. So they come in and they bounce. They just don't come up. They bounce a little bit because they're energetic. You get it? All right. So let's go ahead and apply those effects here. So I'm going to grab my first character. I'm going to go ahead and do my drop down menu. I'm going to look and we're going to look for fly in. And let's go ahead and double click this. And we want this to be with previous. And we want the delay to be 0.2. And the duration. I think well, one second will work just fine. I had to think about that for a second. And for the timing, what we're looking for a smooth start is um, we're looking for about 0.2. So we can just go in here and just go 0.2. And I'm going to go to the bounce. It's going to be pretty significant. I'm going to go to like 0 0.66. If I can get that, 6.7, that'll work just fine. And let's see how that looks. So he comes up when he's bouncing. So again, we're going to apply these same attributes that I applied to him to these other two. So I select him 
Animation Painter. Select him, Animation Painter. And then Animation Painter really makes things easier. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Grab this, this second image here and just drag it out just a little bit so it's a little off center. All right, there you have it. Well, I hope you got some something out of this tutorial. And as always, if you're going to use animation, use it sparingly. Make sure it has a value to your presentation. And do not use animation or sound effects just so you can use it. Make sure it enhances your presentation and it adds value. Well, until the next time, I hope you always find unique ways to make your presentations more edible for your audience. And of course, as always, love to hear your comments and suggestions for other tutorials. Until the next time, take care.